Once you've launched MicroStation, you'll be looking at the work page. And on the work page, up in the top left area, you're going to see an option for changing workspace and work set. First thing we're going to look at is workspace. If I see here, I have Caltrans. I'm going to click here and you'll see my choices here. I've got Autodesk for Civil 3D, Caltrans, No Workspace, and Topo. The most common one that will be chosen will be Caltrans, and that will get us to our roadway and guide sign and things like that. So let's take a look at Topo. If I choose Topo, to the right, this is my work set. If I click here, if you're doing Topo, this is where you can get the choices for your work set, different environments for your aerial, MTLS, photo and surveys. Now, if I change this back from Topo to Caltrans and then to the right for my work set, I see roadway, right of way and guide sign. So depending upon what type of work you're doing, which group you're in, you would choose accordingly. Now, once you've chosen a workspace and a work set, MicroStation will remember that and always return back to it. So if you do change it to something else, it'll remember that and return right back to that. So we're going to leave this set to Caltrans and Roadway. Now down below, we have recent files. Now you can see I've opened up a couple of files historically. So if I was to open this file up, I can just left click and open it up. But if I right click, you're gonna see an option. I can open, just like left clicking, I can open as read only. So if you're planning on opening the file as read only, if that's what you wanna do, this is the way we go about doing it in MicroStation Connect. You could also pin it to the list. If it's something you go to all the time, you wanna keep it there, not just remember the last files you've opened in the order, you can pin it. We also can remove it from the list if we want to. We also can open the folder in File Explorer. So if I wanted to see the folder, the drive and the folder that it's in, I can click there. We also have a preview option. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit escape. That dismisses that dialog. Down below, I have a browse option. So if this isn't the file that I'm looking for and I need to browse for it, I can just click the browse icon and this will open up the browse dialog. And this is where, and let me make this smaller, I can then choose a different file from here or I can change folders and or drives. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel that. Now, if I was going to create a new file in MicroStation, here's the way we do it. We click on the new file icon, and this is where MicroStation, there's basically three things you have to decide here. First is going to be, where do you want the new file to be created? You need to put it in the folder that you plan to work in. So if it's a project folder, that's where you wanna to navigate to. The second thing you need to do is give it a file name down here at the bottom. And the most important thing is the seed file down below. Right now, because I haven't chosen one previous to this, it defaults to V8 eSeed. If I click the browse icon to the right, I'm gonna be presented with a series of choices. Now there's basically six zones to the state of California and the seed files, which also could be referred to as templates, are broken into six different zones and they're dimensionally separated 2D or 3D. So if you're working in zone one and you are doing a 2D drawing, you would choose the first file, which is 2D E seed and E is for English and it says zone one. And then you've got zone two, three, four, and so on. Now down below, you have the same zones, one through six, but these are 3D. So if you're doing a 3D file, then you're gonna to wanna to choose that. Now down below, we have some additional seed files, like for example, the V8E seed. That is a non-geographic coordinate system file. It's not any given zone, but it is an English seed file. So if you were gonna be doing something like a quantity sheet or a construction detail, you technically could choose the V8ECD.DGN as a seed file. So what I'm gonna be doing is gonna be choosing 2D eSeed zone six. That's my seed file. So I'm gonna select the open button. So now I've told it the seed file I wanna to use to create the new file. And I'm just going to type in, let's say test. And then I click save. And it's going to open that file. It will take me into that file. We wanna go back to the work page. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click the close button. Now you can see that is remembered as one of the recent files that I've opened. Now, if you do open a file that has not been opened yet in my Extension Connect Edition, the workspace and work set, when a file is created and opened, 
it will brand that file with the work set and the workspace information. Now, the file here, this one has been opened with this workspace work set. So I'm going to open up the second file here. Now, as this file opens, what you're not going to see is what is referred to as a mismatch alert. That means that the file was branded with that workspace work set. Now I'm going to demonstrate a file that was not branded. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to close. And this takes me back to the work page. This doesn't close the program, closes the file. So I'm going to hit the browse button and I have a file set up for this example. This file has not yet been opened in MicroStation Connect. So I'm going to open this file up and when it checks the files branding, which it has none to what I've got set my Caltrans and my roadway, it's going to give me the mismatch alert. We'll talk about that once it opens it. So I'm going to open that file and here we have it. No work set alert it states here. This file is not part of a work set. What do you want to do now? I have a choice. I can say, use the active workspace work set and I could brand this file, which is typically what you'll do. Or the other option is to open it with no work set. That means no work set or workspace set. So I'm going to go ahead and brand it with the new workspace work set I'm going to click open. It will now brand that file and to see that it was branded, that I don't get that mismatch alert again, we're going to do a close. We're going to come up to close. You can see the file listed there. I'm going to go ahead and open it up again. And you're going to see that I did not get that alert. So whenever you see that alert and there are different conditions, you could have opened it with a different workspace work set is if you had received the file from a consultant and they used a different workspace work set, then you would be prompted to brand that file or open it with your workspace work set. So as you're opening up files that were created in prior versions of MicroStation, MicroStation V8i, you're going to see that on a regular basis. But once you open it up and you brand it with a new workspace work set, you won't have to do that again. So we're going to go back out. We're going to do a file close. We're going to be opening up this file right here as just as an example. And the next thing we're going to talk about is a coordinate file versus a non-coordinate file. Now a coordinate file is generally a file that the geometry or the elements in the file are placed by coordinates. And generally a good rule of thumb is if you see a north arrow, which this drawing has a north arrow, that means that this is a coordinate file. Another way to verify if a drawing is a coordinate drawing would be to turn on Bing maps. Now, if the file has a geographic coordinate system, we will be able to do that. So let me demonstrate this. I'm going to be going to my utilities tab across the top and there's a group called geographic. Now, when I click on the geographic coordinate system icon, if the file has a geographic coordinate system, then you're going to see it listed here. This file currently doesn't have a geographic coordinate system. Now, what that doesn't mean is that the file is not placed by a northing and easting value or an X and a Y. That just means that there's not a coordinate system associated to it. And it would be perfectly fine. You would be able to work with other drawings and it would still be coordinate correct. But what you wouldn't be able to do would be to, for example, export it out to Google Earth or to be able to turn on the Bing maps. I happen to know that this file is actually in zone six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a geographic coordinate system to it. I'm going to click on this icon from library. Now headquarters has taken the liberty of pre-selecting of the many different coordinate systems that are available for any geographic location on the planet. They've taken the liberty of pre-selecting the ones that you should be choosing from. So the one that I'm going to be choosing is going to be up here at the top. It's going to be the CA 83 2011. So I'm going to expand that. And then what I'll see listed below are the six zones in the state of California. Now this one happens to be in zone six. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click OK. Now you can see it comes up and it says the, the coordinate system name. Now with this information, I can then turn on the Bing maps. So I'm to do this by going to my view attributes, which is on the view controls here. It's the first icon. I'm going to click on that. This will open the view attributes dialog and down at the bottom is background map. 
Now, if you again don't have a coordinate system or geographic coordinate system attached, you won't see that. It won't appear. So I'm going to go ahead and expand it. Now, background map type, I can go from none, street map, aerial, or a hybrid. So I'm going to choose hybrid. And then what you're going to see in the background is a hybrid in that you see aerial and you also see street names. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over and we'll zoom out a little bit here. This is another way to verify that your file is coordinate correct. Now, this is never going to line up perfectly with aerial imagery. So this isn't a way to ensure that your geometry is absolutely survey grade coordinate correct. But it does let me know that somebody didn't draw this close to zero, zero in the coordinate system. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, set it to none. We'll turn that back off. Now, if I was to put in a quantity table in this drawing, that would be perfectly fine. If I was to do a construction detail in this drawing, even though it is a coordinate correct drawing, that would be fine. The one thing you need to be careful of is the view is rotated. And if you do a table in a rotated view, you could have problems. If you do construction details in a rotated view, you could have some problems. So what you want to do, if you are going to use a coordinate correct drawing for doing construction details or quantity tables, is you're going to want to unrotate the view. A very quick way to do that is Hold the shift key down and right click. And right there at your cursor will pop up your view tools. Here where it says view orientation, if I select this, I have two choices, top view, which is what I'm going to choose, or I have rotate view. So I'm going to choose top view. And now you'll notice the north arrow is pointing straight up. So the view has now been unrotated. Now again, this is not how we typically work. We need to have the view back so that the sheet is horizontal. To do a view previous, I can again shift, right click, and I have a view previous option. And this will show me what the view looked prior to me unrotating it. So we're going to go ahead and close the geographic coordinate system. When I attach the geographic coordinate system, I don't need to save my file. That gets written to the file automatically. It remembers it. I don't have to do anything. Now, there's something about MicroStation that differs from other programs, such as AutoCAD or Word or Excel. MicroStation is a file-based system in that when you open a file, the changes get written right to the file as you do them. So, for example, if I was to draw a line, so I would go to Home, I can go to Play Smart Line, and then I can draw a line in. That line is written to the file now. I don't need to save my drawing or anything like that. MicroStation writes to the file. To demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is a close. So I'm going to again come back up here to the file close icon. I'm not saving. I'm just closing the file. And then I'm going to reopen that same file. And as I do that, you'll notice the line is still there. So MicroStation saves automatically. You don't need to save. Now, something it doesn't save automatically is your settings. And that means, am I zoomed in? Am I zoomed out? And is my view rotated or not rotated? Or what are my active settings? Active level, color, style, and weight. Those are design file settings. And we can save those by two different methods. One is we can come up to the icon up here that says Save Settings. That You can see there's a shortcut, Control plus F or Control F. Either one of those two would save the settings. Now, when I open this file, you notice that it went to show the entire view. If I zoom in on this curved data table and I do a save settings, so I come up here, I click on the icon, the settings are saved. Now, if I close the file, you can see the preview shows me it's looking at the table. And if I click to open it again, what you'll see is it takes me right back to that curve data table. So your creation tools, delete, modify, that gets written to the file automatically. But your settings, you will need to save settings. Now, there is a preference where you could save settings on exit automatically. And that will be talked about in a later video. The other thing about MicroStation is that differs from other programs is that you can only have one file open at a time. So right now, I have one session of MicroStation going and I have one file open. If I go to open another file, so let's say, for example, I come up to File Open. And let's say I open up that other file that I had branded. I can click on it and hit Open or double click. 
the other file that I was in is now closed. It's not open, it's closed. We can only have one file open per session. So when you close or open another file, understand that the file you were in is now closed. Now, MicroStation practice something that I refer to as dimensional file separation. A file is either 2D or it's 3D. The files you will most likely encounter will probably be 2D because when you're doing plan sheets, you don't need 3D. But if you're doing design work, you do need 3D in the sense that if you're going to do cuts and fills and things like that, like cross sections, you have to obviously be in a 3D file. And here at Caltrans, we use Civil 3D to do that design work. Once that's done, then we just need to create our layout sheets. Again, at that point, 3D is not needed. But you may encounter situations where you need to have a 3D file. So you could either open a file that already is a 3D file, or you can create a new file. So I'm going to come up to File, and you can see I see the backstage here, and I'm going to go to New. And it comes up and it remembers where I was last. Down here, it's looking for a file name, and it's looking for me to choose the seed file. Now, we last time we chose it, we chose the 2D eSeed Zone 6. This time we're going to change it to 3D eSeed Zone 6. So I'm going to come down here. There's my 3D eSeed Zone 6. That's my seed file. I'm going to select that by clicking Open. And I'm going to name this file 3D Test. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the existing there and type in 3D Test. And we're going to hit Save. And it's going to open this file. It's closing the prior file, opening the new file. I'm now in a three-dimensional file. And to illustrate that, I'm going to open up down here in the lower left some more views. So I'm going to open up views two through four, and then I'm going to tile my views. I can go to the View tab across the top, and then I can come under the Window group and select Tile. Each view right now happens to be set to top. So what I'm going to be doing is changing this view, view number two, from being instead of a top orientation to an isometric. So I'm going to come here on the view controls. I'm going to click there and I'm going to change it on the tool settings window to isometric. Now you can see it says view to isometric. Now if I start drawing and I'm going to go to my home tab, I'm going to go to place smart line and I'm going to start drawing in this view here. What you're going to see is the AccuDraw compass appear. The compass is right now flat to the screen. I'm going to hit T for top, and you're going to see the compass rotates in the isometric orientation to the top orientation. So this is something we'll talk about in a future video, but this is a 3D file, and I can start doing 3D geometry. Now, if you get files from Roadway, from Civil 3D, they may be 3D topo files. If you open them up, you'll be able to rotate the view around as you need. Stay tuned for more 